Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I thought we might take a look at the lowest of the Core 2 Duos, the E4300. This CPU clocks in at 1.8 GHz with 2 MB of L2 cache on an 800 MHz bus. The fact that it's a Conroe Core 2 with a reduced front side bus means it's most likely a really good overclocker too. You can see here that with a slight bump in vCore, this CPU easily clocked to 3.1 GHz. With a better cooling solution, it will most likely go even further. The memory is clocked to 800 megahertz and you can see here it's in single channel. Unfortunately this motherboard does not have support for dual channel memory configurations. And of course we're still using the GTX 260 for now so this should make for a decent comparison to the P4641 that we looked at last. Of course we need to get our numbers for Cinebench R15 both stock and overclocked so we can add them to the chart. And now that we have our numbers we'll get them on the graph. This is the first dual core that we've added, so the score is of course going to be a lot higher. And you can see the huge difference the overclock made. I want to use the same games and scenes from the last video, just in case anyone wants to compare the Core 2 Duo at 1.8 GHz to the P4 at 4.3 GHz. A little spoiler alert, the P4 loses pretty bad. So you can see here in GTA 5 at 1.8 GHz, this Core 2 just doesn't seem to have enough to make the game playable. Changing the resolution didn't help it out here, so the CPU is still the bottleneck. Average FPS is in the mid-teens, and surprisingly, overclocking the 3.1 didn't really help out much either. Hitman Absolution. Running the built-in benchmark, we see the CPU is really getting hammered. But this benchmark is pretty tough on a CPU. Actual gameplay may be a bit better. I do plan on testing the CPU out more in the future, covering more modern games and uh, less of the older games like we see coming up here in a minute. These were the games that I had installed for the Pentium 4 testing, and I do have a Celeron D coming soon to test with the same format. Once overclocked, this CPU seems to run the benchmark quite a bit better. As you can see, the frame rate jump up. Not a lot, but it's enough to notice the difference. And here are the final results with our average FPS going from 16 to 22. Next up, we have Alan Wake's American Nightmare. This game was unplayable on the P4, even at 4.3 GHz, but on a Core 2 at 1080p, the GPU is beginning to get a workout. Since these are the settings that we've used previously that were set by default, I left them, but you can most likely get uh, even better frame times by using a lower resolution and turning off anti-aliasing. As you can see, overclocking the CPU really had no effect, so at this point, it seems the FPS is being limited by the GPU. Darksiders 2, this is not where I would expect it to be. This system meets the minimum CPU requirement, recommended GPU requirement, as posted by the game, but the GPU seems to have some room to stretch here, and there is no difference really between the stock and overclock results. The specs do recommend a quad core, so this must be a game that prefers more than two cores and just becomes thread bound on a dual core. Okay, back into some of the older games. Some of these are a couple years older than the CPU. 
Doom 3, even at 1.8 gigahertz, stays at 120 FPS for the most part, with dips where there's a lot of action going on. 120 is the limit on this game, and if you set it to run at 60, then you would, you'd see no dips whatsoever. Obviously, a Core 2 Duo at 1.8 GHz is more than adequate to run Doom 3, uh, hitting at 120 FPS limit for the majority of the time, and there's really no difference when you overclock it because there's nowhere else to go. The original fear running the in-game benchmark, this game generally favors one core, the faster the better. This GTX 260 is more than enough GPU and a Core 2 Duo easily handles it as well, but we should see some improvement here once overclocked. This benchmark is pretty inclusive of what the hardware will actually have to render in the game. A lot of smoke, shadows, particles, and physics, so it's a pretty good indicator of what you can expect during gameplay as well. In dark hallways you may see uh, really high FPS, and then you turn a corner and you encounter enemies that overturn tables, shoot at you, and chunks of cement fly off the wall, they toss grenades at you. Uh, this was a pretty impressive game for 2005. And here you can see the difference the overclock made in the FPS. Average and minimum frames went up almost 30 FPS. Far Cry is another game that really likes a fast core. Even at 1.8 GHz, the Core 2 Duo is faster than any CPU that was out in 2004. Even still, the GPU is taking a nap. Even when overclocked, the GPU still has room to stretch, but the FPS went up pretty significantly. The average frame rate has gone up by about 40 FPS. I'm not even going to bother with Flat Out 2 anymore, since the Core 2 Duo has no problem running it at a locked 100 FPS, which seems to be the cap for this game. Bioshock sees CPU usage hitting 100% at times with a good workout for the GPU as well. At 1.8 GHz we see an average FPS of over 90 at 1080p with the highest settings selected. Once overclocked we see the average frame rate increase to just over 100 FPS despite still being a little bit CPU restricted. Half-Life 2 is another game I'll probably no longer test with Core 2 Duo since even the slowest Conroe CPU can run at an average FPS well over 100. There's still times when it'll dip below 100 during heavy on-screen action, but generally it remains over 100 FPS the whole time. Tomb Raider is from 2013, and I have just been using a built-in benchmark for testing, and surprisingly, even the Pentium 4 didn't do too bad here. Obviously, the Core 2 Duo does much better, but it seems this is a game that is playable over a pretty impressive assortment of hardware. Looking at the final result, you can see a huge difference the overclock made. Crisis is always tough, and at 1.8 GHz at 1080p, uh, we're still struggling to get a decent frame rate. Although it is way better than the Pentium 4 at 4.3 GHz. 
At 3.1 gigahertz, the GPU sees even more utilization, showing at lower speeds the CPU is still a bottleneck. Alright guys, that's going to be all for the Socket 775 for now. I just got a lot of parts in the shop and more on the way, so there's stuff to do. Some of it may get recorded, some of it not, but we shall see, time permitting. You guys take care, get out, enjoy the rest of the summer as it's going to be over soon, and I will see you guys on the next one.